Is there a way to regret-proof your life? Bronnie Ware hopes that by sharing with us the five top regrets of the terminally ill patients she met working as a caregiver in palliative care, she will encourage us to address these issues positively now while we still have the time. Bronnie Ware thinks that our society has shut death out, almost as a denial of its existence. This denial leaves both the dying person and the family or friends totally unprepared for something that's inevitable. We are all going to die, but rather than acknowledge the existence of death, we try to hide it. Bronnie believes that if we are able to face it with honest acceptance before we have reached that time, we can change our priorities before it's too late. It gives us the opportunity to put our energy into the direction of true value. We are halfway to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for your ongoing support and encouraging comments. If you want to support us further, please check out our Patreon. It's highly appreciated, and it helps us to keep creating amazing book summaries for you. Regret number one. I wish I'd had the courage to live life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. This regret of not having lived a life true to themselves was the most common one of all, and Bronnie heard a lot of words filled with anguish, despair, and frustration. Being a black sheep means a lot of pain. The easiest way to handle it is to keep living the life expected of you. Each day a boring routine, safe and secure, but not satisfying. People should be brave enough to respect their own desires. It takes strength and honesty, but so does lying on your deathbed and admitting that you wished you'd done it differently. The author claims that the pain other people cause to us by not accepting our wishes has been their own suffering projected onto us. Happy people don't treat other people that way. They don't judge others for living a life true to themselves. They respect it. Regret number two. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. According to the author, there is nothing at all wrong in loving the work you do. In fact, this is how it should be. But it's about maintaining balance so that work is not your whole life. We work hard because we want a better life and need to be recognized through our achievements and belongings. It sometimes deprives us of spending time with those we love or of doing things we love. None of the life reviews of dying people which Bronnie Ware witnessed were spent on thoughts of wishing they had bought or owned more, not even one. Instead, what matters to people at the end of their lives is how much happiness they have brought to those they love and how much time they spent doing things they themselves loved. The simple life is the happy life. True value is not what you own, but who you are. It is a matter of changing your perspective. Regret number three. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Learning how to express feelings is unfortunately a challenge for too many adults. It was also a deep frustration and regret for the dying. They died feeling like their family had never truly known them. Some people develop illnesses related to the bitterness they carry as they have never learned to express themselves. The author reveals that some dying people felt they had never given their beloved ones a chance to know them. Some people are too scared to let their feelings show. So they work and work and keep their family at a distance. They don't know how to talk about feelings. Bronnie's explanation of why we are all so afraid of being open and honest is that this way we try to avoid pain that may come as a result of our honesty. But those walls we create bring pain of their own by stopping others from knowing who we truly are. We must learn to express our feelings now, not when it's too late. When we dare to reveal our beautiful selves to others, it brings us peace. It takes courage to express your feelings, particularly if you're not doing okay and need assistance, or if you've never expressed honest feelings to someone you love and don't know how they will react. But the more you practice, the better things become. Regret number four. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Most people have friends, but when it comes to the hard times, there are not a lot of friends who can be there. When someone is dying is one such time. There will always be people who come and go in life, friends included, but those who truly matter are worth every effort to stay in touch with. Dying people want to enjoy their remaining time as much as possible. Friends bring humor and happiness to sad times. Some dying people confess they have been dying of loneliness, starving for human touch at times. 
Loneliness leaves emptiness in the heart that can physically kill you. It is not a lack of people, it is a lack of understanding and acceptance. That's why they're missing their friends most of all, and wish they hadn't lost touch with them. You imagine your friends will always be there, but life goes on and you find yourself with no one in the world who understands you or who knows anything about your history. Friendship is about being accepted as who you are, not as who someone else wants you to be, like a partner or family. A little time with friends reminds them of who they are when they're not with mom, dad, grandma, or grandfather. We should find some balance and make time for our friends regularly. We should do it for ourselves even more than for them. It is about giving ourselves the gift of their company. Regret number five, I wish I had let myself be happier. Some dying people complain about missing a lot of potential happiness by focusing too much on the results rather than the time spent along the way. While working toward goals, the present moment is often neglected. People think that happiness depends on something falling into place, while the author finds happiness is a conscious choice. Choosing happiness is a daily thing, a new habit to embrace. Depending on the end result is not the way to do it. Gratitude for every day along the way is the key to acknowledging and enjoying happiness now. Bronnie Ware explains that not every person spoke of regrets, though. Some people said they would have done some things differently but were not consumed with any actual regret. Some were beautifully content with the life they had led, or at least they accepted the life they had led. If you enjoyed this video, you're sure to like our summary of Today Matters by John Maxwell. Thank you for watching.